Hello and good morning from from Milwaukee to Nashville as me and John are still waking up. Yep, I have my coffee still waking up. Yeah, mine mine's over there too far to get. <laughs> uh, I guess a morning smoke's gonna have to do. <laughs> um, our show's brought to you by the wonderful people at Hockey Locker, twenty oh two West Hart Avenue. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, you can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com or give up give Hockey Locker a look up on eBay. We do some stuff on there. All righty. Um, also, before we get into that, um, I will be attending this Saturday's game and as well as the school day game for Admiral. So if you see me, come say hello. Just know if you're saying hello from a distance, I may not hear you. Because if I'm zoned, I will not notice. So come like here and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but let's get into it. All right. I'll, last night, the Nashville Predators took on the Vancouver Canucks. Shots on goal. In the first period, the Canucks outshot the Predators 10-9. to In the second period, the Predators outshot the Canucks 9-6. to In the third period, both teams had 11 shots. And in total, Nashville outshoots the Canucks 29-27. to In the face-off circle, Vancouver was better at 61.7% to Nashville's 38.3%. Definitely needs to be worked on a little bit there. Um, on the power play, Nashville goes 0 for 4 with 6 penalty minutes. Vancouver goes 1 for 3 with 8 penalty minutes. Vancouver outhits Nashville 27 to 17 and both teams had 12 blocks. Scoring in the first period for Vancouver at the 1345 mark, Lafferty scores his second of the year, assisted by Hughes, his sixth, and Boulier, his second. Then at the 16, uh, that was a deflection, by the way. Then at the sixteen ten mark, he used his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then at the sixteen ten mark, Sissons gets on the board for Nashville, scoring his fifth of the year, assisted by Yossi, his fifth, and Foudy, his first. Then at the sixteen forty mark, Nashville gets on the board again. Thirty seconds later with a goal from Fabro, his first, assisted by Forsberg, his seventh, and O'Reilly, his third. Um, so O'Reilly gets a point in his 1,000th game. Um, yeah. That'll about do it for the Preds' involvement in this game. <laughs> right. Uh, scoring in the second was Elias Pedersen with an assist from Quinn Hughes. Uh, his seventh, and uh, Makalev, his sec uh, second. Uh, then uh, Pedersen scores on the power play at the 16-38 mark with an assist from Kuzmenko and Rodick, his Kuzmenko's fifth, Rodick's eighth, Pedersen's fourth. JT Miller gets his fifth in the third at the 4-11 mark with an assist from Brock Besser and Quinn Hughes. Besser's fourth, Hughes' eighth. Elias Pedersen scores his fifth with an assist from Bolivier, his third, and Myers, his third. That was at the uh, 17.02 mark. That was on an empty net. Yeah. In net for Vancouver was Thatcher Demko. Uh, he stopped 27-29 with a point nine three one save percentage in net for the Nashville Predators was Kevin Lankinen. He stopped 22 and 26 with a 0.846 save percentage in his first action of the year. So he's not exactly up and running yet. Right. Um uh 
I um, would you... like to wish uh, my prayers to the people of Martin County. Um, there was a coal mine that collapsed there. Um, okay. It's in Kentucky. Um, I know a lot of Preds fans live out there. Um, so just know my uh, my thoughts are with them. Uh, also, um, we will be talking a lot about uh, the um, incident in England this Saturday. So uh, we'll be talking quite a bit about that as well as a couple of retirements announced within the last couple of days. Right. Literally one this morning. Yeah. Um, but we want to thank all those guys for their, uh, give them their spotlight and give them their time. So yeah, we'll, speak, give, we'll, we'll speak on those, you know, um, on Saturday, giving the proper people to their time to do their due diligence and talking to them and doing their media interviews and stuff like that. Um, The only uh, other thing I have is I wanted to ask you, were you surprised at Forsberg, Parsonen, and Carrier all having minus twos last night? No. Okay. I'm a little surprised, at least for Carrier and um, Forsberg. Forsberg's never been that much of a defensive forward. He'll hit you, but he's never been... <sighs> He's never been over the top. All righty. As you all know, it is officially November. So as it is November, it's Hockey Fights Cancer Month. Um, and uh, we will do our best to do our part. Yep. Um, oh, boy. I'm still navigating the new... Stuff. Uh, all right. Um, beyond that, you know. It's a relatively young team. Yeah. With a brand new system, brand new GM. I know it sounds like I'm making excuses for a bad loss, but when you have your backup goalie in, you really have no centered superstar. I'm not talking about the superstar star being a center. Yossi's your superstar. But you don't have a superstar that's going to give you 40 goals a season. That's what I'm getting at. You don't have a guy who's going to light the lamp every game. Almost. Or at least put you in a position to where people have to focus on them and open up the lanes. Right. So Nashville doesn't really have that. So it makes it harder for their offense to flow. It's a, it, Everybody can do the same thing. Right. As much as I like that, I don't like the fact that, you know, we're always middle of the pack for some reason. <laughs> so, um, we'll see where the season takes us. All I got to say is thank God we're not the Chicago Blackhawks after watching that Arizona game. The other. I was about to bring that up. They took quite the beating. Yeah. I was like, seven, I even two, watched some one, of it. But seven, eight to one is not. <laughs> right. Yeah, I watched some of it. Yeah, Chicago doesn't look that good. Bedard doesn't look like the superstar caliber player that they expect him to be. Right. Um, 
it's kind of reminding me of Lafreniere's draft where Lafreniere had all this hype around him and he's still not talked about. Right. You know, in the upper echelons. Jack Hughes is. McDavid is. No. I, I, the other part is, how long does, if Edmonton keeps falling, how long does that team stay together? Right. Are they going to want out before, you know? And that's going to cost a fortune. Yep. Probably all your draft picks. Uh, at least three top players. For Nashville, it would be like all your draft picks plus Yossi and Soros. Right. Uh, that's a no from me. Um... Um, so far, there hasn't been any transactions for our organization today yet, either. I just checked. I just looked, too. I'm looking. Um, didn't talk about it much Saturday, but, um, you know, uh, one of the things, I was at the game on, on Saturday, and one of the things I had noticed is, um, when you when you watch them play, it wasn't a difference in style. It was, I think that literally Vancouver came out knowing what we were going to do. Right. They'd played us recently in Nashville. So they kind of knew what we were trying to do. Right. You got to switch it up a little bit, which it looks like they did. Yeah. Early on. But then they went back to the scout book. And when you do that, sometimes they will burn you. Right. Yo. So, it's just one of those things. Hmm. By the way, congratulations, like I said, O'Reilly, to uh, for a thousand games. Um, also, congratulations to Elias Pedersen on his hat trick. Um, you know, those are few and far for players. So, yeah, it may be the only one he gets all year, right? So, it may be the only one he gets for a couple of years, right. So yeah, it's it's few and far on that one. Um also today on a side note, the Atlanta Gladiators will be taking on the Greensville Swamp Rabbit. Greenville. Greenville Swamp Rabbits. Yeah. Yep. All righty. And, and, okay, hang on. Atlanta is currently, wait, what is going on? Oh, okay. I was like, they're going to have the ECHL All-Star Game at a hotel? Uh-huh. Because the first thing I looked at when I... Um, ECHL has joined the Hockey Fights Cancer as they have turned their website purple. Okay. It was, Atlanta is currently third in the entire conference. They are 3-0. Um, by the way, congratulations to Goose Gus. Gustav Griggles. Gustav Griggles ended up with a shutout of 
of the Allen Americans along with that butt kicking they handed them on Sunday. Yeah. Um, but uh ending up on ESPN top ten was not on my list of things I thought was gonna happen for the Atlanta Gladiators. Yeah. So congratulations, because that's you know, yet another admiral side goaltender organization goalie that keeps ending up on ESPN. I don't know anybody in our organization. <coughs> Yarrow. <laughs> Yarrow. <laughs> um, you know, uh I, I think about it and these are whenever I see the E or the A. On ESPN, I get really happy. I don't care what team. Right. I get really happy to see that, like, uh, you know, taking away from that. Because, you know, uh, well, when you see the lower leagues uh, sometimes outperforming the upper echelon. Right. Um, Guys like Scott Darling. um. Connor Ingram, Troy Grosnick, um, I remember. I don't think Saros ever played in the E. No, I don't think he did. No, he came here and they told him you're the backup. <laughs> mm-hmm. He was the backup at the start to Peter or to Merrick uh, Peter Morazic, Merrick Raznick, uh, who was currently playing in the Czech Republic. Um. I, I just think that when you see that, um, you know, like I said, it, it's always a good thing for the sport. Yeah. Because that puts eyes on your league going, oh, well, it's not just some beer league where they're fighting. And no, we're also not the Savannah Bananas of hockey either. Mm-hmm. Even though I just gave the NHL an idea. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, if a hockey player starts twerking before he shoots the puck, I'm gonna be frightened. Right. <laughs> if there was ever a time I'd use the word cringe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, uh I, I take it all seriously. Um the Admirals have been in, in the USHL, the IAHL, and the AHL. Yeah. The International Hockey League was about as amateur as it got. A lot of those guys were NHLers with nowhere to go. The A didn't want them. You know, there were just so many players in the 90s who were capable of amazing things. And it's just like, if your name didn't Sell, you were done in the end back then. Now right. it's based on performance. Right. Which is the way it should be. Because if, if it wasn't based on performance, let's just say this. If everything was based on performance in the 80s and 90s, Michael Jordan would have never been a starter. Wayne Gretzky would have never been in the NHL because nobody was paying attention to the Indy Fuel. Or, I'm sorry, the Indianapolis Racers. Yeah, that's what they were called. The team he came from out of amateur league was the Indianapolis Racers, who no longer exist. They are currently replaced by the ECHL Indy Fuel. You know, um, all these talks of expansion, maybe Sunday we should bring up the thought, or Saturday or Sunday or whatever day we do our NHL news. Haven't kind of figured that one out yet. Um, We'll look at our schedule and go from there. But, um... What else would be good for hockey? So I'm gonna let you sit on that one till Saturday. Uh, where where else in the U.S. could we put more teams, and and where could they go with that? Um, that is gonna be our first thing in our NHL news on on Saturday or Sunday, whenever 
Depending on how our schedule falls. Right. This weekend sometime. Yep. But, all right, thank you. We both have stuff to get to today as we have adulting and um, uh, meetings. <laughs> so, thank you for watching and have a great day.